Hi there again. So this is the double decker uh, videos today. Um, I just posted the yarn weight video. I thought that would be important for you all to know. Um, and now I'm posting something that I've been waiting to do for a very long time. Um, and I'm really excited to share this with you. Um, it's not a full pattern, but it is uh, more of a tutorial. So you'll remember that I did a yarn um, color change tutorial a while back. Um, and that is the basis of what is known as tapestry crochet. So tapestry crochet is basically where you can get designs into your fabric by using different colors of yarn. Um, I generally only use two colors of yarn. Um, any more than that in your hat or your garment, fabric, whatever, becomes uh, very thick um, the way that I do it because I hide the other end, so it basically becomes reversible. Um, the reverse side of this one isn't really as neat as this side. Um, this pattern is something that I created. Um, it's basically inspired by ancient Greek um, lock and, or not lock and key, I think it's just key patterns um, and mosaics. But it kind of reminds me of waves on an ocean, um, and I really like that idea. So. This one I did in a hat, um, so the way I worked this pattern was actually from the top down. So you'll see it from this angle now, which doesn't change much, um, except for the direction of the different colored waves. Um, so this is important because I'm going to show you how I do this, and it's kind of complicated. This is worked in the round, um, and working tapestry crochet in the round is different than working tapestry crochet back and forth. Um, this video is only about working tapestry crochet in the round. Um, I'm not as comfortable with doing it back and forth. Um, I think that it's a little bit more difficult, and I really like the versatility of doing a hexagonal pattern here. Um, so I actually developed this way of doing tapestry crochet, or um, designing for tapestry crochet, and what I did was I realized that when you crochet, um, and this is after doing quite a few mistakes on hats, um, that I was trying to do tapestry crochet because I am self-taught, um, and I realized that when you crochet, you're actually kind of crocheting in a hexagonal pattern, um, whereas if you can see here, this stitch right here, um, is directly below this stitch. But the way that when you're working the round, the way that you do that, it actually pushes the row over, like the next row, over to the right a little bit. Um, so you have to really watch where you're putting your hook and where you're putting your color to get the right pattern. So um, I'm going to show you how to do that properly. Um, I'm going to do the starting pattern, uh, or starting row, or starting two rows, of this pattern right here, um, which is the wave pattern. Um, the thing to note, so this line here represents the way that the seam of your hat, headband, whatever, um, is going to be, because I am not doing this in a spiral, I am just going around, and then when I get to the end of a row, I'm going to do the slip stitch, chain one, to get where I'm going. So. I already did row number one here. You can see that there are three of the accent color and then two of the base color. So my base color is gray, and then my accent color is going to be yellow. How I started this was I just did the first one, and then three, and then another stitch of the gray, basically. So I'm going to work this in... Uh, sets of five. So if you're going to do this project, chain however many multiples of five. So in my case, I did 40. And then instead of doing two gray, three yellow, or three yellow and then two gray, I did I started with one gray and then three yellow, because it's going to be a little bit um, more manageable when we get to the seam areas where it's going to be a little funky. Um, so I'm actually, this is the technically the seam here, and then this is where I'm starting. So this next row, you can see right here that I'm going to start with a gray, um, and then the next stitch is immediately uh, yellow. 
So I'm going to sh just remind you how to change colors while you're working. So the way I like to do tapestry, by the way, is I like to make sure that your yarn is in ball form, like these are, and then I give them a place to stay. <laughs> so the gray is going to be out to my left, the yellow is going to be to the right. Um, this is because you're going to want to make sure that you know where your yarn is and how you're holding it so you don't end up twisting yourself into the yarn and creating a tangle. So you're going to start with the gray and if you remember you're going to keep your not working yarn up against the crochet so you can lock it into your work. So I'm putting my hook through the loop, the single crochet on the bottom, and pulling one up. Usually I'm going to put the gray again, yarn over, and go through. However, since I am changing it to yellow for the very next stitch, I'm going to pretend that the yellow is coming from behind. So the gray will always come from the front and the yellow will always come from behind. So I'm going to finish that first stitch in the yellow because this is going to become the top of the next stitch. So you're going to see that I'm going to go into this yellow stitch below and since in the pattern it's only one yellow, I'm going to change immediately back to the gray. And remember, you're going to take the gray from in front and finish that off. So if you've already noticed, it's pretty easy to see, is that even though this stitch was right technically above this other stitch, um, it's in the top of the stitch, it's been pushed to the right a little bit. Um, and that's important so I can show you what happens next. So the next part of this pattern is two grays. So I'm just going to single crochet. So this one, since the next stitch is gray, I can finish it in gray. And then do this one, and then I have to finish this in yellow. And I'm going to bring it from behind the gray. So now it's going to look, if I put this yellow stitch in the top of this gray stitch, you're going to think that it'll just be this floating stitch. Um, but the way it works is that it's so close to the stitch down here on the top of that stitch that it actually looks like it's connected when you do the pattern. So I'm just going to do the first half of my single crochet and then notice that it's going to be uh, another gray so I'm going to finish this stitch in gray. And then you just repeat that. So that was my five stitch pattern there. And you repeat that as you go along. So I'm going to start with my gray, go to my yellow, finish it off in the yellow, do my one yellow stitch, pick up the gray, do my two gray stitches, and then pick up my yellow, and then do my yellow stitch, pick up the gray. Um, I haven't written this as a pattern yet, um, just because it's very, very difficult to write a pattern for tapestry crochet. Um, you have a lot of color changes. Um, so I'm trying to figure out a way to do it that's a little bit more friendly in the crocheting world um, because you don't want to have like one row be um, single crochet one in gray change your color to yellow single crochet one change color to gray change or single crochet to um, and usually it's not necessarily like you use the names of the color you just use um, color a color B stuff like that, um, but it would still be quite a bit of a challenge to follow as well as write. Um, so I think I might just have to do a visual pattern somewhat like this, um, but something that when you do your, like, your, your end of a row, where you might have to change colors at the end of your row, uh, then that's going to be a little bit more difficult. Um, so I think I might just have to figure out a way to make that more clear. Um, and that's what innovation is all about and what art is all about, where you're going to have to innovate 
and really problem solve on what do I need to accomplish and how am I going to accomplish it using the tools that I have. Um, so yeah, you just keep doing this all the way around and then in the next row you um, do the next pattern um, and it's pretty easy to just go through. I hope um, I might scan this pattern in eventually um, however I'm gonna have to make sure that it's a little bit cleaner. Um, these are just like scratch pieces for me. Um, but feel free, like, you don't have to use this pattern. Um, you can really experiment with it and have fun with the different color changes and how it's going to work out for you. So, please make up your own patterns. Uh, I got this graph paper from a free graph paper creator. Um, let's see, it's called... I can't even read it on here. Um, but you can create your own graph paper online and then print out however many pages you need. Um, and that's the way to do it. You can also just play around and uh, randomly change your colors and you'll get a fun kind of, um, I don't know, mottled effect. And that could be really great too. Uh, you can check out my Etsy store. I have a few other examples of tapestry crochet at benjamincrudwig.etsy.com. And you can, again, subscribe to my channel and you'll get more videos. I am planning on doing some more kind of multiple stitch videos. So like my bobble, puff, and popcorn stitch video. I think I'm going to do something like that, but with edgings. And that should be pretty fun. Uh, so subscribe to the channel. And if you want to follow me on Facebook, it is... Facebook.com slash Benjamin Crudwig, and that is my business page. Or you can follow my blog at crocheteringstandingup.wordpress.com. And don't worry, you don't have to write down all of these links now. I'm going to post them below. Um, and also, I'm not sure if you guys know this, but I am a photographer as well, and I've been working on some art photography. So I'll post that link down there for my Facebook page. Um, I don't have a lot up there right now just because I'm revamping the page. Um, but you can also go to bcrodwig.com um, and look at my artwork on there. Uh, so I hope you enjoy. If you have any questions, remember to comment below or email me at bccrudwig at gmail.com. And if you don't want to email me, then just leave a message in my YouTube box. Uh, keep hooking. Bye.